Today's video is about mapping. We're going to look at drone link and how to set up a mapping mission. We're going to then look at running the mission and collecting over 300 images. And then what do you do with all those images once you've got them? We're going to have the stitching done in Maps Made Easy. So today's video basically in three parts. Part one, drone link workflow. Part two, flying the mission. And we're actually going to have a battery change part way through the mission. And part three is using Maps Made Easy workflow to create the final map. Let's get started. In the search, uh, search bar here, we're going to put in the location for this mission, which is going to be something called Central Park. There we go. Drone link now zooming in on Central Park. Now that we have begun, I've anchored the starting point of the mission at that, right in front of those, uh, which actually these are football bleachers next to a small little practice uh, football field. Now we're ready to begin the mission. We've, we've determined where, we've clicked our uh, initial location pin in Drone Link. And now the next thing to do is to look over here under new plan. Let's go ahead and give it a name. I'll click on the editing pencil. We'll call this uh, Central Park. And Drone Link provides a template for the map, uh, as you'll see in a moment. Uh, reducing the things that we need to do to get this ready to fly. So I'll click on done and then we will click on new component and I'm going to go straight to the map component. There's not a lot to decide on. The camera will be pointed down the whole time and drone link automatically calculates how many uh, shots need to be taken to cover the area you designate. So I'm going to click on map and I'm going to zoom out so I can see, yeah, this is the park in this area. I'm just going to kind of click in the center of the center of the park. And there you go. Drone Link has now provided the default grid. And you can see it doesn't come very close to uh, covering the entire park. So we'll make a few adjustments. But uh, also one other thing you can see is the default altitude of the mission for a mapping mission in drone link the default altitude is set to 200 feet i'm going to change that to 250 feet i do notice there is one other parameter i do need to change it's telling drone link what camera you're using i'm not flying a phantom 4 pro i'm in fact flying a mavic air 2 and i'm going to shoot it in the 12 megapixel mode not the 48 megapixel mode so there you go now so i'm going to click done and let's worry about getting the grid set up to cover our actual, the area of the park that we want to fly. Now, there are four default boundary points, A, B, C, and D. I'm gonna change B to be over here. I'm gonna move point, boundary point A up to this northwest corner of the, uh, of the park, approximately there. I do want to keep that blue drone pathway below the road. Uh, you may be able to see there if I zoom in a little bit, you can see why I placed it where I did. Making sure that the blue, the drone pathway does not in fact cross over this uh, roadway. Let's go back and place our boundary points. So now I can see, hmm, I need, let's get the, uh, southern points kind of established. These are roughly where I need this to go. I'm gonna refine these boundary points a little bit. We can see it's getting pretty close to what we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the insert boundary point plus sign and then just move that boundary point in. As you can see, this is not difficult to finesse the shape of the area you're gonna be covering. So I'm going to add one more boundary point here and bring it over like so. I'm going to make sure I stay below the roadway. So there we go. Now 
All right, I believe I have got my coverage of the park. If we zoom in, you can see Drone Link has knows that this is where I'm gonna start the mission. The very first thing it's gonna do is fly this dashed blue, dark blue and light blue line to the beginning point of the grid that it you know, created. And it's gonna start flying this grid pattern. And it's gonna fly it back and forth until it gets over here to the end. And then at that ending point, I do want to set return to home. I'm gonna uh, click on my the purple pin action on finish and I'm gonna say return to home so return home when it's done so there we go this is our preview as you can see drone link has handled all of the <laughs> difficult calculations for a mapping mission by already putting in all of the photography points all of the captures are already programmed into the mission so drone link will be telling the drone when to take the photos exactly every two seconds if we click over here where we see export to google earth we'll take a look at that kmz file and we will double check our mission in google earth so there we go parameters flight motion is the one we want to take a look at now before we even do that if i just zoom in a little bit we can see, yeah, this is our mission. This is Central Park. Got quite a few photos, 340 some odd, I believe it was. So our preview in Google Earth looks pretty good. The next thing for us to do would be to go to our site and run this mission. Okay, so we're at the Central Park now, starting the drone link map. We can see, need to adjust the exposure. We will get ready to execute the mission. Three, two, one, starting mission. Now the first thing that happens when you execute your mission is that Drone Link will have your drone achieve its designated altitude before it goes anywhere. So it's going to rise to 250 feet. Then it's going to take that pathway to the left as you can see in the inset. Okay, now we're moving towards the beginning of the grid pattern. I'll speed this up so that we can get there a little faster. So now that we're at the beginning of the grid, the camera will point down drone will align itself with the grid pattern and begin shooting. There we go, we've successfully begun the grid pattern. We've made our first turn. If you direct your attention down to the lower left part of the screen, you can see the red drone indicator, the simulated drone moving down in its grid pattern. Every two seconds, a photo being taken. So the, the mapping mission has begun. Um, direct our attention just for a minute we can see our batteries at 83 percent the uh, video signal is full controller signal so there you go if we are looking at the mission the mission is going to run for another 16 and a half minutes we're three minutes and seven seconds into it we are at an altitude of 250 feet as we go back and forth through the grid pattern collecting each of the images that will be used to stitch together to make the map. So I'll fast forward this. I do want to point out that this uh, mission actually is going to have a battery change so it might be well worth talking about for a moment what happens under that circumstance. 
So Drone Link will manage your um, mission and allow for a battery change, which is cool. Um, it simply decides when your battery has gotten to too low of a point, it will return home and you swap out the battery, bring the app back open and push play and it will pick up the mission right where you left off. Now in this particular mission, we were within just a few seconds of being finished when it de decided that it, the battery had gotten too low. Uh, and we'll see the Drone Link app take control here in a moment and it will return to home. I'll need to change the battery and then it will fly right back out to finish the mission. Pretty much, you know, just a very simple, simple procedure. There is the uh, control override message. That's what it looks like when the app takes control to bring it back home so that you can put in a new battery. Now you can notice that the battery indicator does show as red and it's uh, gone from 20% to 19% during this return to home. You know, the battery will be replaced and the drone is gonna fly right back out. In fact, I'll, I'll uh, fast forward to that point so we can see that quicker. Mavic Air 2 should reconnect. We'll see the battery, new battery information should be displayed. At that point, I will simply push the play button on the mission to restart and it will pick up right where it left off. It says ready to go, meaning that the aircraft is connected again. I see now that the battery is indicating 100%. So I've made the battery swap. I've just pushed the play button to reinitiate the uh, Three, mission. Two, one. The, the mission it says it's starting mission. Starting and what's mission. it going to do? It's going to go right back up to its initialized altitude. Now it is going to, I noticed it pointed to, the, it puts the drone on the heading that it's about to fly, which is right back where it was before it initiated the return to home. So as you can see, the entire mission has run for 18 minutes and 57 seconds, and there's only 34 seconds left on the actual mission. So this battery swap, you know, really happened at the very end. Okay, camera down. It's getting ready to pick up where it left off. And there's the photos beginning to shoot again. Mission accomplished. All right, mission accomplished. Software will, it's going to initiate a return to home. So it's going to ascend to the return to home altitude that's set in the fly app which is for me again we'll see is about 350 feet and then it will come home the return to home and the landing occurred with uh, without incident and then the next step in this process will be hey let's go get all these images 300 and some odd of them let's get them stitched together into a map Okay, now that we've got our images recorded, this last part will be quick and easy. So let's take a look at how Maps Made Easy works. We will click on New Map. And I'm going to choose the DJI specific workflow because it's going to be expecting images with the metadata from DJI. So we'll click there. Okay, as we see here, step one is to select and review a sample file, which means we will upload a single image to upload so that Maps Made Easy can analyze what metadata we'll be following. Now, I do need to select here, choose processing options. 
I'm going to choose to process at one quarter resolution in order to keep this map free. Step three. So we'll name the map. This will be Garland Central Park 2. So I'm going to then select the files to upload, which is these 347 images, I believe. And we will upload them. So I'm just going to click on Upload, and it will begin the uploading process. And what we see is each individual file beginning its journey to Maps Made Easy for the stitching process. When Maps Made Easy is completed with the mapping process, when the stitching is complete, they'll send you an email with a link to your map. And this is what you'll see. It gives you a lot of detail about your map. It also gives you links to download your map. So let's take a zoomed in look at the map. You can see quite a bit more detail. And if we uh, zoom in fully, you can see barely that's where the uh, takeoff point was. Here are those baseball fields. Quite a bit of resolution for free from Maps Made Easy, you know, and they are, you know, processing this with photogrammetry accuracy. All right, there you have it. That's how we make a map using uh, Drone Link and Maps Made Easy. Turned out pretty cool. Do me a favor, click on the like button and the subscribe button, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.